Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the gear that I use to film my Quackalope videos, my board game review videos, unboxing videos, even interviews at events like PAX, Gen Con, and Origins, which I'll be attending this year. The studio space I have, which is just a room in my apartment, is finally becoming the space that I really want it to be. It's slowly developing. It's been a long time coming, and if you've been watching this channel from the very beginning, you've slowly seen the audio quality improve, the video quality improve, uh, just the location, the set, the way I present myself on camera. All of that has, as far as I'm concerned, and correct me if I'm wrong, all of that's gotten better. And so I wanted to start the conversation. I wanted to start sharing with you some of the gear I use uh, the tricks I've learned to make these videos as nice as possible because I'd like to see our industry, our community as a whole, uh, slowly improve, uh, get as good as we can be because the more attention we bring to this little community we have, this little subculture we have, the better quality media we put out, the better quality photos and videos and gameplay content, the more people will pay attention, the more friends we'll have that'll hopefully join in and play some games with us. And at the end of the day, that's all we really wanna do have more people be a part of our world playing games. That being said, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know any specific questions you have and please be selfish in the comment section. I'll do my very best to try to answer your specific needs with whatever insight I have. I've worked in media for about eight years. I have a degree in film and media production from Berea College. I've worked as a wedding photographer and videographer, a commercial photographer and videographer. I'm now doing this board game work along with some other contract work that is my primary career or my primary job. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the gear I have sitting here and then some of the gear I wanna talk about I actually am using to film this video. And so I'll show you behind the scenes footage of that gear uh, either in action or just footage of the gear specifically. One quick thing that I want to emphasize before I start talking about the gear and the setup I have is that I do this for a living. Having my own studio space, having my own gear uh, is something that's come from about eight years of working in this industry. The reality is a lot of these tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you can be used without this gear specifically. There's a lot of improvement and quality things that go into video production that don't require this fancy gear at all. You could use something as discreet as a cell phone to produce some really incredible content, and I'd encourage you to do so. One of the lessons I wanna leave you from this video is that you don't need to go out and spend a fortune in order to produce good quality content. There's plenty of ways to produce really high quality video content with whatever is in your pocket and maybe 50 or $100. And if that's what you have, if that's where you're starting from, then you should start there before you buy any of this gear. I do wanna run through the gear that I use because some of it has solved problems for me. And I know there's some people out there that are asking questions around what sort of camera they should buy, what sort of lenses they should use. And they're probably curious about the type of gear that I use behind the scenes. So my primary filming and shooting camera is the Panasonic Lumex GH5. I have a variety of different types of glass. This one on here is the 12 to 35. I also use a lot of the Rokinon Cine series. These are declicked lenses. So they allow you to control the aperture or the iris of the lens uh, manually. They're really good for video. They're not so good for photography. But this is my primary filming camera. I have a GH4, I have two GH5s, and then I have a GH5S that is recording me currently. These are the cameras that I use for my top-down shots, my side shots, my front shots, and I film everything in full 8-bit 4K, 24 frames a second. I love these cameras for a variety of reasons. They have no limited record time, so they're able to record for hours on end without any arbitrary cutoff. I use a power plug instead of a regular battery in the bottom, so that the only limitation I have to my record time actually comes in with the memory cards. Along with that, these cameras have a stabilized sensor, which allows me to do a lot of the handheld shots that you see in my B-roll footage, uh, completely without any sort of gimbal or three-axis stabilizer or anything like that. I really love the quality increase that you get from having something that is so light and compact, but still is a little powerhouse, just like this GH5 is. For audio, I use a Rode Link primarily. I actually have it pinned onto me at the moment and it's feeding directly into my GH5S. I'm also just getting set up this Rode NT1A with a swivel arm 
that should be feeding directly into my Zoom H6, which is gonna be able to both provide power to it and also record multi-channels. Spoiler alert, I'm working on a podcast, and so this will come in handy uh, very, very soon. You'll be able to see that in action or at least hear that in action very soon on my channel. I already went ahead and mentioned these Rokinon uh, Cine Glass kits. As far as I'm concerned, when it comes to the price point and the quality that you get from them cannot be beat. And I know they make a whole range of different lenses. Now, the important thing to note about these lenses is that they have a fully declicked aperture. And so if you're able to see this, the iris of the lens changes manually. Just like the focus ring on a photography camera allows you to pull focus, you can do the same exact thing except with light on these lenses. Now these lenses, because they're completely manual and they don't communicate with your camera, aren't very good for photography. It's a little bit harder to narrow in and, and get into a really accurate in-focus shot. But for video, these almost never leave my camera. That being said, there are some situations where I don't use these as heavily. For instance, this camera I primarily use as my top-down shot, and it's got a 12 to 35 Lumex lens on it. I use this lens because it not only works really good with pulling focus and making sure the table is completely in focus, but also because it gives me a range, so I can spread out and get a wide shot if I need it for whatever I'm filming that day, or I can zoom in nice and tight and get a clean shot. Something like this 35 would be way too close for a top-down angle like I do. Here's another example of the Rokinon. This one here is gonna be the 12 millimeter, which is just a really nice wide shot. If you've seen some of my older videos, this used to be the lens that I used on my front-facing uh, forward camera. I recently ended up switching to another Leica lens just because like this zoom lens up top, it gives me a little bit more range. For photography, I currently use a Canon Mark III, and the one lens I wanted to point out is this 100 millimeter macro lens. Not because it's a lens that I think you should specifically get, but just to emphasize the difference between a macro photography lens and something like this Rokinon Cine Glass or any of your more standard photography lenses. There are lenses that are designed specifically to get high quality detail shots at a really close range, or at least a one-to-one -one range, meaning that as close as I can see with my eye, that's the detail and accuracy that this lens will focus at. So the Canon Mark III is what I do all my photography with. The Panasonic GH5 is what I do all my videography with. As far as other things around the studio space, I have three key lights in this studio space, one hitting more across and behind me, one hitting more on the table, and then a softened light, a light with a softbox on it, uh, keying in on my face. That allows me to have a fairly even and smooth quality of light, at least I hope so, uh, while still illuminating and showing off the game pieces on the table without the background being too bright. I also always make sure that the room light is turned off. The reason for that is a lot of room lights have a orange glow to them, and I really don't want that in the camera. I want all the light to be nice, even, and cool, or at least in even temperature, so that my camera doesn't get confused between the quality of the room light and the quality of my actual studio lights. I also have a variety of tripods, all with the same bottom mount. So they're all gonna be using these Manfrotto uh, little quick release plates. The reason for that is I can switch any of my cameras to any of my tripods very quickly. All the tripods that I have are going to be the Manfrotto 190 GO. Uh, I've just found them to be universally really good and accessible tripods. I have fluid heads and I also have a three axis geared head on one of my tripods, this front facing one. That tripod allows me to dial in the balance of this front facing shot uh, as accurately as possible since on this shot leading lines such as the bookcases, the tops of the bookcases, where, my, where I'm positioned, and this table all need to be squared off as much as I'm able to make them so that there's not something visually uncomfortable when it comes to kind of watching me uh, talk about a game. The other important things that I've done for filming is I have these bookshelves behind me that absorb a little bit of sound. I've lined my walls with foam panels. I've put some up on the ceiling and I have a carpet down below me to make sure that as much sound and echo in this wide open space is consumed. I don't want a lot of reverb or echo coming back into my mic. And when I first moved into this space, that was something that I had a really hard time dealing with or figuring out how to accommodate for it. As you fill in your space, whether it's through foam panels and a carpet or through just putting more and more shelves around, 
that sound will bounce a little bit less. You'll get a much higher quality of sound. You can always go back in in post and add reverb if you like the way that sounds. Now, I know I'm going over a lot of topics as quickly as possible because I want to just kind of go over the general of what I use and the space that I film in. As far as some tips and tricks that I've learned in the process of filming this, uh, I use B-roll to cover up some of the cuts or transitions I make in my videos. I always make sure I have multiple camera angles going at the same time so that if I make a mistake, I can cut to another camera angle. If I make a third mistake, I can cut to a third or fourth or fifth camera angle. I'll use as many camera angles as I have on hand to make sure that my quality is as fluid and clean as it can possibly be. If all you're filming with is a cell phone, as if you had two cell phones, you could get little table tripod mounts, have both your cell phones set up, sync the audio with a clap, and you could do the same thing. You could go into a movie editing software such as iMovie, sync those two camera shots together, even if they're from a cell phone, and tie them up and clean out some of the loose ends. Clean out the areas that you blunder, where you stumble over yourself, your ums, your its, your likes, your ahs, everything like that. Make it as clean and concise as possible by cutting the transition from one camera to another camera uh, when you're making some of those splices. Whatever the case, I think I'm done with this video so far. I really just wanted to give you a basic overview of the gear I use, the space I'm filming in. I'm really excited that the space is finally starting to come together or tie together in a really nice way. I'm excited about some of the programs coming up, the podcast that we're gonna be launching soon, and just the upcoming content I have on this channel. Please remember, this video is all about asking questions. So if you have any questions about my setup specifically, uh, ideas around your setup or what you might be able to do better, feel free to leave questions in the comment section down below. I'll do my very best to answer them with whatever experience I have. And if I don't know the answer, I have a community of other videographers and photographers that I'm friends with, and I'll be sure to pose the question to them to see what they think, what suggestions they might have to improve the quality of what you're doing. This whole process is all about sharing and improving so that we all kind of grow as a community. And the final note that I wanna make, I wanna give a shout out to three really incredible board game reviewers that are doing some really amazing stuff. I wanna give a shout out to Lonely Man BGs who does some really interesting and dynamic uh, how to play videos, tutorial videos. He's had a few successful Kickstarters and he has some tutorial videos that are coming out right now that are really setting pace for some of the best how to play videos I've seen. I also wanna give a shout out to Old Man Games who's the lead videographer at a college up in Washington who also happens to love board games. He's partnered up with Man vs. Meeple. You might have seen some of the unboxing videos he's done with his daughter, but the quality of videos he's putting out are absolutely outstanding. I'm really excited to see what the future holds for him and to see how he pushes this industry in the direction that I think it needs to go. And then finally, I want to give a shout out to B-Roll and Board Games. This is a new creator that I've watched uh, growing on the scene who started just before I did. The quality of content he puts out has really challenged me in a lot of ways. His edits are dynamic and interesting, really incredible stuff coming out from him, and he's been doing some really great partnerships with some board game companies recently. So if you have the time, please go check out those three channels. I'll leave their links in the comment section down below. They're some of the people in the industry that I've been watching closely because I feel like they've been pushing the production quality of the industry up another level. And they always challenge me to improve what I'm doing here. Along with that, if you know any other creators that are pushing the industry in a certain way or challenging you to produce better content for yourself, please drop their links and names in the comment section down below. I'd love to check out some other creators that maybe I haven't heard of in the past. Whatever the case, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. I hope this video has been informative and we'll see you next time. Thank you.